So Dr Young, uh, welcome to uh, Queensland Corrective Services and thank you for taking the time. Uh, thank you for being with us and also thank you for all of the work you've done since the beginning of the year, but more importantly, the work over the last uh, couple of weeks, which has been really quite uh, extraordinary, and I want to thank you. Well, thank you, Commissioner. It's been an absolute textbook response from your staff. They couldn't have done it better if they'd followed a rule book. And unfortunately, we don't have a rule book, so we've got to work this out day by day. But what they've done three times now is exceptional. I don't think we would have seen this response anywhere else in the world. They have just managed it so beautifully. And they've obviously got the clear prevention strategies in place because they didn't know they were going to get visited with this. So the first couple of times, we sort of knew we were at risk and things might happen. This time we didn't. It just hit us out of the blue, total bolt from nowhere. And despite that, everything was in place. So they were clearly managing that distancing between themselves and the prisoners, and they were managing the processes there. They must have been um, cohorting because we didn't get, get, see it get out across the whole sector. They must have been managing the fomite transmission, washing their hands and keeping that going. And also they came forward and got tested and they were just so good. So I just can't congratulate you and more enough for what you've done and the systems you've put in place. Unfortunately, I think we're going to need them again going mm. forward, but I've got every confidence that it'll happen. It's too early to say we're over this one yet. Um, we've had three days of no um, cases, which is brilliant. And so hopefully we'll be able to see that. I've got a lot of confidence going forward. We need 14 days and then we'll be able to all celebrate. But you and your team should be celebrating now. The response was just perfect. Well, that's wonderful and incredibly kind of you. Thank you. Can I just take you back uh, just one moment? Mm. Um, 2020, um, uh, what a year. I'm sure it's not the year you had envisaged for yourself, and I'm sure that five million people in Queensland, and in fact, very many people across the globe would all be saying very much the same thing. When you reached that point, probably the latter part of last year or early this year, and you started to watch with much interest what was unfolding overseas, uh, potentially understanding the impact that a one in 100 year pandemic might have for Australia, what, were you, what was your first reaction? What did you think? Well, the first thing I found out about it, just as a, a bit of a discussion, we had a national um, discussion about the bushfires and the need for the um, P2 masks that were in the stockpile. And the chief medical officer just said, we better be a bit careful here. There's a new virus in Wuhan. So that was around the 3rd of January that I first heard something might be happening. And then that escalated. Within days, we knew that we had a new virus that we were going to have to manage. And unfortunately, it wasn't the one we were prepared for. So we've all done the work for influenza pandemics. We had one in 2009 with swine flu. So we're pretty comfortable we knew what to do. This is a coronavirus and that's totally different. So we'd had the experience of SARS, mm. which killed 10% mm. of the people who had infected. We had MERS that killed 25%, but neither of those were particularly um, contagious. Mm. So we're managed. Whereas this one we were hearing was pretty contagious. So for every person infected, they'd infect another two and a half people, which means you have an escalating mm. number of cases. And also it's a coronavirus and coronaviruses affect every cell in the body. They're not just respiratory viruses. So it's not just lung disease. So there were just so many unknowns that we really didn't understand. And that makes it hard knowing what to do. And as I said a moment ago, there was no rule book for this. So we very quickly got ourselves activated. We had on the 25th of January, the first case in Australia. So they, I stood up the State Health Emergency mm. Coordination Centre. And then the whole of government um, response came into being. And that's where we're so lucky in Queensland. We did that right at the start. We got every government agency involved, including yourself and, mm -hmm. and all your team, and really then worked it through as we do with a disaster, which is a framework we do understand and we can use. So all of that then happened and we then got together at a national level and started working out what it mm. meant. Mm. But r early on, we were very, very concerned as chief health officers from around the country that we didn't know about 
what we needed to do for this virus and we had to sort it out very quickly. Mm -hmm. You stood up the state arrangements really early and you mm. mentioned about around about the 25th of uh, January. Um, yeah. We also messaged our workforce really quite early in this threat environment. In fact, the very first message that I can find that I sent out to the workforce was on the 31st of uh, January. Right. So really early, warning yeah. people that there's a lot we don't know, but more importantly, this is what the best science and your advice yeah. was being communicated to the workforce yeah. back at that time. Since then, we've learned a lot about this particular uh, virus and we know that you've spoken about um, at-risk populations, particularly the aged and particularly yeah. Indigenous people and people with comorbidities, but you've also spoken about the risk that occurs in some uh, very closed environments yeah. like aged care, um, whether it be a cruise ship, where infrastructure limitations might yeah. amplify the effect of the disease. Now, you've had a lot of experience within the context of corrective services and you know um, our uh, workplace and what we confront and what we deal with. What was your first reaction about particularly our vulnerable prisoner population and the infrastructure limitations that we have? The, the last place I wanted to see it circulate was yeah. in a prison. A prison, I think, is very similar to aged care. It is people very close together, sharing their lives very, very closely, and you know it can then just rapidly spread. And as you pointed out, a lot of your prisoners are particularly vulnerable. They might be Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And also you do have in some of your prisons a, an older cohort, mm. which I think a lot of people don't know, and they're mm. at um, enormous risk. You also have got prisoners who you know, smoke at a higher rate, who have drug and alcohol problems. So there's a whole range of reasons that you just don't want it to get out in a prison. Plus your facilities, you've got people closer together, they don't necessarily have um, access, of course, to, to single-use bathrooms and all of those um, problems would make it very, very difficult to manage. Mm. So most recently, uh, the events of, uh, you know, since the 26th, 27th of August, we had a number of staff, including recruits at the Academy, QCS Academy test positive, and we found that a group of 14 or so staff from Arthur Gorry Correctional Centre mm -hmm had undertaken their training and two of those staff had tested positive, which then had an implication for Arthur Gorry. Yeah. Upon first hearing that and knowing that we'd had confirmed cases and the linkage to the prison, what was your, what was your reaction to that? That it was going to be very, very hard to keep it mm. out of the prison and spreading. And not only that, because I know your process of moving people between prisons, mm. I was then very worried about the other prisons in the state. And just that movement, because it, it's quite... Um, you have a lot of movement there and it would be so easy to not just have one prison that would have an outbreak but have every prison in the state with an outbreak and that would have been extraordinarily difficult to manage. Mm -hmm. So from our perspective, uh, that is an agency's perspective, it's incredibly important that everything that we do when responding to COVID-19 is guided by the best science. Now, mm -hmm. we're not the custodians of the science but we take our advice from you as the yeah. Chief Health Officer. And your advice and your assistance and the work of the SHEC and the IMT, the work of uh, Graham Crark, has just been fantastic and so supportive of the work that we're doing. Um, but we couldn't have done that without you and we couldn't have done that without the best advice guiding our policy and our practices locally. And I just am curious in terms of what is your assessment within the context of that advice and how closely we followed that? You followed it brilliantly. You went and followed every single piece of advice and when you couldn't, you sat down and worked through how we could manage it so that it was sensible. And every single time, you just did it. It was because what we were asking you to do was virtually impossible, but you managed it so that we got the outcome that was needed. And it's by doing that in a partnership, I think, is critical. And also, I think the other thing, and this is why I go back to that disaster arrangement, we've got a long history, we've known each other yeah. for, for many years, and I think that's so important yeah. that you don't want to create those relationships in, in time of battle. You've got to create them in time of peace, and that's what we've done here. So we can understand and talk very genuinely and frankly about the issues and know that we're doing that collaboratively, that it's not that we're you know, one or the other, we're, we're just working together. And I, I think that's proven to work. Yeah. I've got a large workforce decentralised, um, spread across a, a range of functional areas. 
there's a huge workforce that works in the custodial space behind the wire and correctional centres from one end of Queensland to the other. I've also got uh, wonderful staff working in uh, community corrections, um, dealing with 20,000 offenders being managed in the community and of course people in specialist operations and corporate areas of the organisation. Specifically moving forward for all of the workforce, whether they work in custodial, community corrections or specialist operations, um, what's your advice to them? What can they do to keep the people in their custody and their care safe themselves and more importantly their families and the rest of the community? What's your best advice to them? Best advice is if you're sick, stay at home. Never ever soldier on. And I think um, genuinely Queenslanders are too quick to think about their workmates and what will happen if they don't come to work. And I think your staff are exactly the same. And we've just got to change our whole um, normal behaviour. And if we're sick, with even the slightest sniffle. And we've seen that with some of your staff who are just fantastic at picking up symptoms very, very early. Just stay home and get tested. Now, sometimes it'll take maybe 24 hours, 48 hours to get that result, but just wait till you've get, got that result and then come back to work. Because we know that one case can virtually close down a, a workplace. So if you're sick, stay home. That, that's the most critical one. Then the other one is to try and change um, your innate behaviours. Mm. Um, we, we crave human touch, but we can't. Like, I didn't shake your hand today. And hopefully people, that, that's now normal to mm. not mm. touch other people unless you're living in a household mm. with someone. And maintain your distance that that's probably the most important thing you can do. If mm -hmm. you can maintain that 1.5 metre distance from people, just maintain it. If you can't, um, wear a mask. And that's so alien to our culture. It's not to other cultures. And that's something I think we need to change, that if you can't maintain your distance, just wear a surgical mask. They're easy to get hold of now, and some people are making them. If you've got your triple thickness um, material, then they're pretty good too. Just if you can't maintain a distance, just wear, wear a mask. That's mm -hmm. important. So I think if people do those things, they can then minimise the risks moving forward. Because mm. I think we've probably got this for quite a while to come. Mm. It's going to take a while before we either get a vaccine or a, a good treatment. Um, and I, I don't think we'll get herd immunity in Australia. That's the other way we'd get out of this right. um, yeah. pandemic. But I don't want herd immunity because mm -hmm. that would mean there'd be a lot of deaths mm -hmm. to achieve that. So I don't think that's where we want to go. And I don't think this virus is going to mutate to make it any different. So we're just going to have to manage our systems as we are, and I think we can. As we go forward, we can um, continue to manage our lives. And once we're through this current cluster, we'll be able to return a bit more to normal. We had to bring in all those restrictions but we should be able to lift those and hopefully we'll be able to move towards Christmas in a slightly more normal environment. So what I'm hearing from you is an optimistic uh, view for the future, provided people follow the rules. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think we can live with this virus. we we'll just have to live a bit differently. Sure, mm. sure. So last week uh, was Are You OK Day on Thursday. Uh, this has been a very challenging time for all of us. It's been particularly challenging for you. You've worked remarkably hard, consistently, for a long period of time. The weight of the safety of five million people in Queensland uh, must really weigh on your shoulders. Uh, and I know you're a wonderfully caring uh, human being, and this must be a really difficult time for you. How, uh, how are you going? Are you OK? I am very OK, thank you, because of the team we've got. It's not just resting on me. We've got a magnificent team here in Queensland and we work really well together. And Queenslanders themselves, the vast, vast majority, have put up with restrictions, put up with processes that I think are quite unbelievable. And because of that, we've got to where we are and I think we'll be fine going forward. So thank you for asking after me. It's about all of Queensland and I hope that all Queenslanders take a while to think about what they've achieved in our state because it's been the whole state 
that's achieved this. Mm. And I think it's time to take a bit of time for yourself. And I actually think the best thing we can all do is get outside. The risk of transmission outside is so much less. And we've got a beautiful environment here. And we should just get outside, walk and enjoy it. Well, that's great advice. Dr Young, thank you uh, for taking the time today. Thank you for speaking to us. Uh, but importantly, thank you for all of your advice and thank you for all of your assistance and support um, over this really difficult time, but also to you and the Queensland Health Team. Um, our most strongest partnership within Queensland Corrective Services is with our colleagues at Queensland Health. And I want to thank you on behalf of QCS uh, and thank you to all of our colleagues at uh, Queensland uh, Health and particularly uh, the team at the SHEC and the IMT for their wonderful support not only over the last three weeks, but also since the beginning of the year. So thank you most sincerely. Thank you, Commissioner. It's always delightful. Thank you.